Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over some Python and Ruby code to randomly select one of two items in a list. And we're gonna do this in two different ways. We're gonna start things off with the most basic case where we have an equal distribution, basically a 50-50 shot of choosing item A or choosing B. Then we're gonna go over how to do a weighted sampling of the list where we can choose what percentage we want. For example, let's say that you want item one to be picked 75% of the time, whereas item two is going to be picked 25% of the time. So we're gonna see how to do that in both languages. Also, spoiler alert, we're looking at the end game result here for Python and Ruby above here. We can see there's you know, basically the same idea of how to get there, but uh, different syntax, different language, uh, potentially different solutions for different languages. But yeah, let's uh, peel this back a bit and just go over some examples of starting with the most basic case, and then we'll work away up to how I arrived at this solution here. So let me just comment out this. And by the way, I'll leave a link to my blog post in the description below. That's going to have the code here in case you just want to run that on your own uh, later on. But if I run this demo here, we can see that we are either getting heads or we're getting tails here, tail, blah, tails here. And uh, we're just using the built-in sample method that comes with Ruby. So basically pass in an array here of as many items as we want. It doesn't need to be two. You know, if we had three items here, then it would equally distribute those 33.333 percent chance for each one, but we have heads or tails here. So we're just choosing heads or tails, 50% shot. Cool. Got it. Now, uh, Python has a very similar function here, and it is in the random module. So we can just import the choice function here, which is what we're doing over here. And if I run Python 3, there we go, demo, same exact deal, right? Let me also clear my screen just so we have a fresh shot there. And yeah, this is going to be rolling heads, 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 heads. I'm getting lucky. So, but yeah, Basic idea here is, you know, if I did this command 100,000 times, chances are it's going to be very, uh, or I hope it's going to be very close to 50-50. That's based on the implementation of the language. But yes, that's the base case here, right? 50-50 shot. But now let's start talking a little bit about weighted samplings here. And before we get into the code itself, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the problem specifically, like the why. Like I didn't just wake up today thinking, wow, I'm going to make a video on weighted samples. Uh, this came down to me wanting to seed my development database in a web application with a whole bunch of different fake data. You know, hundreds of users, hundreds of blah, blah, blahs. And let's just stick with user case, right? So let's say that you wanted to generate 100 different users in your system in development, just so you can see what your application is like when you have uh, all sorts of different developers on there. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to generate 5% of those users as admins, and 95% would just be regular members. And, you know, this is not limited to admins or booleans or anything like that. This could be basically whatever you want. Like maybe your application has some type of optional field that, that a user can be or whatever resource that you're dealing with. And maybe one third of the time you want that field to be filled out, whereas the other uh, 66 percent of the time, then uh, it wouldn't be filled out, right? There's uh, basically endless possibilities here of where you might want to pick something X amount of time over another thing, but not want to necessarily split it 50-50. So there was a whole bunch of cases in my app where I was doing this. I just listed out a couple of them. But yeah, after that, I started Googling around a little bit, like, you know, how to do a weighted sample of two items. And it doesn't really matter what language it's in. I'm not saying I can, you know, write every single programming language ever, but, you know, if it's in Python or it's in Ruby or if it's in JavaScript, then I can kind of just, you know, port one over to another. So there is some benefit of just learning more than one language because sometimes uh, there are better resources for different languages and you can just port th those things over to the language that you're using. But in any case, I found all sorts of uh, really complicated algorithms on Stack Overflow. I'm not saying the people who wrote them are bad or, you know, they're too complicated, but, you know, for my specific use case of just having two items. I just want to pick either item A or item B some percentage of the time. Uh, all of those algorithms were more focused on like a more generic case of like, well, what if you have five items? Like, it, you know, it suddenly becomes a lot more complicated. But uh, eventually, you know, I just came up with the, this solution here. I say I came up with like, you know, I'm probably not the first person in the world to come up with this idea. Like a thousand other people probably did. But, you know, this came... It didn't come from a stack overflow, it came from my brain, which means like maybe it's wrong. So let me know in the comments below if this is actually not accurate. But for me, I think it's working. And for the use case I'm using it for, generating fake data in development, uh, it's completely fine. But I do think it works because it actually is working. Uh, but I think before we start going over the code itself, it could be interesting just to talk a little bit about, uh, yeah, how did this even get arrived to as a solution here? And Funny enough, like I just finished watching Stranger Things season four. Don't worry, no spo spoilers at all. But, you know, if you're familiar with the show, like Dungeons and Dragons is a game that they play throughout the, the series. And I used to play D&D too back in the day. And don't worry, this is not going to be a long story. But the idea there is when you play D&D, you have um, lots of different dice with lots of different sides. So you can have like a four-sided die, six, uh, eight, 10, 12, 20. It's, it's been a while since I played. But basically, you know, imagine that you have a dice with uh, a lot of different sides. And, then, and let's take with like a 10-sided die here because it's going to be a little bit easier to go over this uh, analogy here. So 
you have a 10 sided dice or die, whatever singular. And uh, if you were to individually roll that die, you have a one in 10 chance of choosing any single item or, you know, the outcome of that roll could be whatever uh, number between one and 10, right? So you have basically a one in 10 chance of rolling a three where you have a one in 10 chance of rolling a 10. It doesn't really matter what the number is. You know, you're individually rolling these things. You have a 10% chance of landing on one number on a 10 sided die done. But if you rephrase this question a little bit differently, like, you know, what are the odds of, let's say, rolling a nine or higher on a 10 sided die? So in this case, you have two chances, right? You can either roll a nine or you can roll a 10. And uh, that gives you two out of 10 or one out of five if you reduce that or uh, more commonly like 20% chance. So you have 20% chance of, of rolling a nine or a 10. And if you take that concept and apply it to here, that's kind of basically what we're doing here. But in this case, we have a random number between one and 10. Uh, so think, imagine having a hundred sided die. And the basic idea there is you can choose to pass in whatever percentage that you want. So let's go with, uh, well, let's use this one here. I mean, I also put a comment here where if you did a weighted sampling of 50, then, you know, you might as well just use the built-in sample method here from Ruby because, yeah, I mean, at this point, you're just replicating this, but like in probably a slower way because this is written in C, I guess. I don't know. This is not a complicated condition here, but in any case, like if it's 50-50, if it's probably should use uh, the other one. But instead, you know, hold on, let me just clear that. Then, uh, yeah, it's still working the same way, right? We have a 50% 50, 50 chance of, of choosing either one. Yeah, but the idea here is, yeah, we have the percent being passed in, then we have the yes case and the no case where, you know, if you were playing D&D &D and like you really wanted to do more damage with a higher die roll or whatever, like you can consider winning. Like if you were choosing to try to roll a nine or higher, you know, if you roll rolled a 10 or a nine or something, you can say you won. Uh, so that's why I put yes here for this and, and tails is no um, for this specific case here. But yes, percentage 50. So the idea here is like, you know, is 50 greater than whatever number the random number generator gave us. Remember, this is going to be a number between one and 10. So let's just say the random number generator gives us like a 27 or something like that, right? Our percentage is not going to be greater than, or actually, sorry, our percentage will be greater than uh, 27 in this case. So the, the yes value will, will be chosen here, which would be heads. And then otherwise, you know, if it happens to be uh, the other way around, then we get tails. So let's actually go with a, a more different example here, like basically admin or member. So going back to the use case of before. So in this case, we have a 5% chance of an admin. Otherwise, they're going to be a member for the other 95% of the chance. And if I run this and keep running this, you know, unless I get wildly lucky on video here, you know, we're probably just going to see a whole bunch of members in a row because, you know, 5% chance is not that likely to happen. So the idea here is again, you know, percent is five, five greater than the random number here. Well, that means that, uh, our percent needs to be higher than the random, randomly generated number here. So what, is, what does it mean to win or hit yes in this case? Well, we need to roll a one, two, three, or five. You know, it's five is greater than or equal to five, so that's still uh, a true value there. So if we roll anything that's a six or above, then we get the no and we get the member. And yeah, that's basically how that works. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna keep trying because chances are I probably won't see it on video. Uh, but if you do run it, let me know how many times it took you because then you're very lucky if you hit that. But uh, yeah, we can do basically the same exact thing in Python as well. So if I come at this one out and we go back down here, then this is the same exact thing here. If I go to Python here, let me also clear that. There we go. So I'm just running, you know, remember, 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 it's all the same thing here. And uh, we can see weighted sample. I use the same function name. We have five, we have admin, we have member. And there's a function up here. And uh, yeah, we just have a one-liner for Python here. So it's the percent greater than equal. In this case, Python has a random module where we can do rand int here. It's gonna choose a random integer between one and 10. And if that happens, then we get the yes, else we get the no. Now, which one is more readable? That's debatable on your part. Honestly, I really don't like to use ternary operators too much in Ruby or any language, but in this case, I feel like it's pretty readable. It's a fairly simple condition. Ruby also has an alternative one-liner if else end syntax, but I felt like it got a little bit too noisy. This was honestly just more readable, but I don't, eh, it's not the focus of this video, right? Um, but you could totally do that. now. Python, though, on the other hand, uh, and that's basically it, right? I mean, we, I'm not going to rerun this one because you've seen that. Uh, also, you know, just to throw a heads up there, you would use a choice uh, function instead, just like you might as well use sample if you're uh, dealing with a 50-50 here. But Python has another option here. So if we run this one here and I run that and that and that, uh, well, we can see that the weights here are 95 and, and 05. But Python, yes, it has a built-in functionality through this choices function here. This is also in the random module. And the idea there is we can populate 
this with a list of whatever. It doesn't need to be two items. You can have, let's say, four items in a list and then set the weights to be whatever percentage that you want. Maybe like, you know, 25, 25, 25, 25. That wouldn't be a good idea because then you might as well just use choice. But yeah, you can pick anything that you want that adds up to one here or basically 100. But yeah, the idea with the choices function is, yeah, pop in uh, the two items that you want. Then you can choose the weights for each item. So these are going to line up with the, the items in the list here. So the, the admin here is going to be uh, 95% and the member is going to be 5%. I actually see that I flipped that around. That actually should be this way, right? Because we only want the admin 5% of the time. That's why we saw admin a whole bunch of times there. So if I rerun this now, then it's going to be member, 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 unless we get super lucky and it happens to be admin. Come on, one time, one more. Nope, that's why I don't gamble. Um, but in any case, also after that, by the way, I should mention that we are picking the first item in the list here because this technically this choices returns a list. So if I get rid of that, then... I can rerun that and we can just see that we get, oh, there he goes, admin. Uh, but we can see we're getting a list back. That's interesting because you might think like, well, why is it returning a list? Like that means it's, it's annoying. Like you just have to like grab the first item in the list. Well, there's also an optional argument that you can pass in here called K where K is basically the number of items that you want generated from this thing. So if I run this now, we're gonna get 10 back. That's a little bit hard to read with the multiple uh, lines here, but basically, yeah, it's, it's running this 10 times and giving us the list back of what the results were. So that could come in very handy if you just want to do this a whole bunch of times and get a whole bunch of uh, results here, you know, instead of writing your own loop or something like that to do like, uh, yeah, just running this manually. But in our case here, I'm gonna roll that back just to getting the first item in the list, just so we have one. But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess one interesting thing to talk about now would be if you are using Python and you wanted to generate a random sampling of two items, well, what do you do? Do you do this one or do you like implement this function and then do this one? And this really comes down to, well, I guess your use case. So personally for me, if I were in a Python application and I was just generating, again, like this uh, user generation code or whatever you're generating fake data for and you just want to pick A or B, I'd probably actually end up rolling with my own function here because this, I mean, just looking at it, right? This is a lot more typing. If I have to do this like eight times in a specific like user model or something for my generator code, kind of annoying, but uh, doing it like this is a lot easier. And at this point in time, like, you know, I don't think it's worth it to change the implementation of this to be just calling this under the hood with like different arguments. Like, I don't know, like you might as well just do it like that, right? Uh, I actually didn't benchmark both methods, but it's also one of those things where the use case for me, like I'm generating fake data in development, like it, you know, if this one is like eight micron or microseconds slower or something like that, like it doesn't really matter because as soon as I write it to the database, it's taking like literally a thousand times longer. And uh, yeah, who knows? Like this may actually end up being faster because it's like a very simple condition. We're still using built-in Python function here for random it. I don't know. If you want to benchmark it on your own, let us know in the comments below because that could be pretty interesting just to see for the heck of it, right? But on that note, yeah, that's basically going to do it for this video. Here is what I think is a fairly straightforward way to do random sampling in Ruby and Python. I'm pretty sure you can port this type of thing over to whatever programming language uh, that you use, right? JavaScript, etc., PHP, Go, Rust, anything, right? Uh, and that's it. So if you like the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next video.